welcome to episode number one of the Vinny Joe Show, formerly Investment Club. Don't worry, we're still going to be talking a lot about investing here on this channel, and we will be today. But I also wanted to start talking about some other topics having to do with business and just really life in general and like the topic of today's video, finding fulfillment, stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, stick around. But uh, I was listening to a couple podcasts recently. They really spoke to me. And uh, one of them was from Myron Golden. He's got a great pod going. And uh, he was talking about the things that will give your life meaning. Three things you could be doing basically every day, really, to give your life more meaning and fulfillment. I'll just list out the three things. So if you're a note taker, write these down. If you're not a note taker, write these down. The three things are creating, connecting, and giving. Creating, connecting, giving, and I'll uh, break them down. But if you can do these three things every day, you're well on your way to living a, a very fulfilling life. So what does this, what does this mean? Creation, just creating anything each day. You know, I'm creating this video right now. You may go to your job and create an income to support your, your family. You know, money is definitely a, you're creating, um, you're providing, you know, so working, earning income to support your family, doing a project, you know, doing some art, a painting. It really can be anything, but just make sure that you create something every day if you're able to. And then the second one, connecting or connection. I, this one, I think, is especially um, important. If, you know, like for me, for example, I'm a, I work from home, I'm an entrepreneur, kind of a solopreneur. So, you know, it gets lonely, you get there's some isolation that comes with that. Um, so just really making sure that you're like taking the proper steps to uh, get some connection in your day. So it could be something as simple as meeting up with someone for coffee, you know, I try and meet up with friends or, you know, mentors, for coffee, getting in that kind of habit um, is great. Even if all you can do is hop on a phone call with someone, hopping on a phone call, catching up with a friend, relative, whatever it is. And uh, a third you know, option is getting involved in a community. You know, I'm involved in several that I'd be happy to share more about if you guys are interested. I've gotten a lot out of them. You know, um, we go on retreats. I've learned so much. Like I've met some of my best friends in these communities. And it just gives you something to be involved with. So creation, connection. And then the third one is giving. So volunteering, you know, and this one really could kill two birds with one stone. Because if you volunteer somewhere, you could get connection and giving out of it, you know, like literally find anything, just any anywhere to volunteer. Um, you can definitely kill two birds with one stone there. You know, donating things, giving things away. I've been trying to live as minimalist as possible and just get rid of stuff but giving it away just you know i'm the days of going on marketplace and trying to you know get 20 bucks for some some junk and get nickel and dimed are done i'm done with that like just give it away it, it's better for your own sanity like minimalism highly recommend uh so just you know donate give stuff away that's a form of giving and then mentoring, this is a big one for me personally, I definitely get a lot out of mentoring people, especially just talking to, you know, people, whether they're younger than me, or they're just kind of earlier on in the journey, being able to be the guide I wish I had earlier at earlier points in my life, you know, just like when I was younger, or just kind of like getting started with this entrepreneurship path and knowing nothing, you know, like no one in my family was really you know, in business. So it was all new to me. I've had to figure all this stuff out. And like, you know, I'm very happy. I'm not complaining about it, but it's taken like five years, you know, having the right guide, I could have made that progress in one year. So, you know, just being that, that mentor to someone else, personally, I get a lot of value out of it refills my cup. So there you have it. You got creation, connection, and giving. Try to do those every day. I highly encourage, even if you just start implementing, you know, one of those uh, or one at a time, you know, into your day, it truly does change the fulfillment that you will feel in your life. And it's almost impossible to have a bad day if you're doing a combination of all three of these. So get out there, create, connect, and start giving. All right, now on to the second topic for today's video, finding 5X stocks. I was listening to another podcast by... Uh, Herbert, if uh, you guys are in the Tesla community, you definitely know who I'm talking about. He's got a great channel, but 
they were having a great discussion about the P.E. ratio, which this was really fascinating to me because the P.E. ratio is a very popular metric, if not the most popular, common, you know, go to metric to like start your evaluation of stocks. And it's terrible <laughs> because basically what the P.E. does. Right. So people who are maybe more value inclined, um, they will not buy stocks that have a high P.E. ratio. And if you look at NVIDIA, for example, um, if you went back a couple of years, NVIDIA actually had its highest P.E. ratio when the stock was at its bottom, its lowest point. And since then, it's gone up hundreds and hundreds of percent, you know, over the last uh, few years here. So the problem with the P.E. ratio is it's backwards looking. It's basically looking at the last 12 months. So basically, it's almost the same as if you were looking at the stock price over the last 12 months and basing your buy decision over if the stock price was high or low, when we all know past stock price performance means nothing for the future, right? It, it is meaningless. And yet everyone, not everyone, but many people live and die by this PE ratio. When instead, um, what they talked about was a better method is to just, instead of looking backward at the PE, and this is definitely difficult, but I do think it, it it's more worthwhile, is just looking to the future, not necessarily trying to predict, but just taking what you know, and, you know, is this an industry that's growing? Where do I think this could be in three to five years? And kind of putting more of your energy behind figuring that out. Um, and I'll give you guys a few examples, but just looking at the PE, it's just not really useful because there could be a lot of reasons. A, a company could look cheap with its PE ratio, but it could be a company decline. You know, there, there's so many things, or it could be in NVIDIA's case, right? That's a cyclical industry. So the PE ratio is at its highest. The stock was at the lowest because that was the bottom of the cycle there. So there's just a lot of examples um, that you could look at. But, you know, this is definitely something I've used in my investing um, style, I think, more and more the last few years that I kind of have shifted from more of that traditional analysis to looking forward. Like, where do I think things are headed? I'll give you guys a great example. A company called Chipotle, which I've made several videos and articles about. You guys should check out my sub stack too. It's linked in the description there, but um, it's free. Um, Chipotle, I think, is a company that's going to do very well and could be a 5X stock over the long term. I think it will definitely outperform the market over the next, say, you know, uh, decade. And why do I think that? Because if I look forward, if I look back, Chipotle has been doing great too. So, you know, that that is always a good sign, right? It's a very well-run company. Um, new CEO now, we'll see what happens. But I think it's a it's in a great position to grow a lot. Really, I'll just, quick synopsis, like you see on all their bags, 53 real ingredients. People are getting more health conscious. And I think Chipotle is one of the best quick service options uh, when it comes to you're eating real food. There's no nonsense. You can pronounce all the ingredients. People are starting to care more and more about that. Second thing, there's something like in the 3000s somewhere, maybe there's like 3,400 or so Chipotle's currently. They're really just at the beginning of their international expansion, but even just in North America, they're planning to double the restaurant count over the next 10 years is the plan. So they should end up somewhere around 7,000. And for comparison, if you look internationally, there's something like 38,000 McDonald's locations, you know, something similar, 38 or 40,000 Starbucks, uh, somewhere in that ballpark. There's 3,000 Chipotle's. Do you think there's room for growth? I do. I think that they've got the right trends uh, backing it. And so those are a couple of the reasons why I'm investing in Chipotle. It's one of my smaller positions. Uh, but that's just an example of, you know, uh, if you look at the PE today, it might look expensive. But if you take into account all these factors, you know, five years from now, today's PE ratio is probably pretty cheap. And uh, it's just not really a great metric. I, I think that looking forward, all these other things are just much more telling. And again, it's it's very hard. It's it's impossible to predict the future to a T, but you can kind of see where these trends and things are headed. You know, is it going in the right direction or is it a declining business? So that's a little spiel on the PE. And then I'll give you another industry I think that uh, I've taken an interest to that I think there's going to be some 5X stocks and maybe we can break it down some more in the future. But 
a few months ago, I started to get very interested in this industry when Starlink announced a partnership with the cruise line industry. Uh, so I think it was Carnival back then. Um, but they started putting Starlink on all these ships. And what did that do? It has a multi-benefit in helping guests and the workers alike just stay connected. I mean, if you're working on a cruise ship, you're out at sea for days, you don't have any service. That's tough if you have a family and stuff, but now at least you can communicate with them. So that drew my interest to, you know, looking at the cruise line industry and how that's been doing. And you look at a company like Carnival, uh, they're, they were like $60 a share back in 2019. They got decimated by the pandemic. It obviously really crushed this industry. Uh, but today, Carnival is like $17 a share. And uh, their bookings are at all-time highs. They're making more money than they ever have. And if you just look at the trends for the cruise industry, it's growing. Record amount of people cruising this year. Record amount of money flowing in. It's a growing industry. And people, there's a lot of value there. You know, you can go on a cruise and it's a lot cheaper than going to, say, Disney World. So I think there's multi-benefits here. Um, you know, again, maybe we'll, we, we could do a deeper dive into this in the future, but you know, if we were to get like a recession, Disney $200 a day gets a little difficult with like five kids and stuff, but a cruise is always going to be a more affordable option, at least for now. And the people are booking these cruises out one year, two years, maybe even more like the demand is crazy. And again, Carnival was like $60 a share in 2019. It's doing better today. And it's $17 a share. What do you think of that? And obviously, the, the stock price is down a lot because they had to do a lot of dilution because we had a global lockdown pandemic. <laughs> I don't think anyone had that on their bingo card. So they had to do a lot of diluting, take on a lot of debt. But now they're writing the ship, no pun intended. So that's an industry that I'm very intrigued by. It's not the most exciting one. But you know what? That's another thing I'm realizing. The non-exciting ones <laughs> tend to be the better ones because think about the moat for the cruise industry. So again, you've got these trends, growing industry, high demand. You've got like five players. You can't just build a cruise ship overnight. It's not like software or something. You know, they have a huge moat, right? You've got Carnival, you've got Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, Virgin, and Disney has a few cruises. They're the big main players. That's, a, that's really about it. Uh, maybe there's some smaller ones, but... The point is, so everyone can see this, right? The cruise line industry is booming. Even if some new company wanted to enter that market, it's going to be very difficult to do. It's going to take years for them to build a ship. So it's got a moat. It's got the trends behind it. And that's another example of where I'm not really concerned with the PE as much as where is this going? Um, so yeah, those are a few examples. Hope you guys got a lot out of this video. Let me know what you guys think of the new format and what topics you guys are interested in learning more about. You know. If there's anything you're passionate about, we'd love to have you on as a guest. I'm planning on incorporating more podcast style videos in the future. So I'm always looking for guests. Let me know what you think in the comments below. New episodes every Friday. Be on the lookout. Subscribe so you don't miss out. See you guys.